Okay. There's two, I'll go with it. There's two stairways, like... Two stairways to heaven. Two, yeah, two stairways to heaven. <laughs> one, one is the real world and whatever it takes to, to, to get clear of the illusion. Okay. And, uh-huh. The happy dream. And, and, and then the other is faith. Right. I've, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a warrior. I'm General Patton. I've got my troops and my tanks, and I'm ready to mobilize, and I'm okay with that. That's how I've lived my whole life. Right. And the Course is saying, don't be General Patton. Turn it over to uh, the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. in, and this is faith that there is another way. Not your big idea. It's somebody else's big idea, mm-hmm. God's big idea. God's big idea. <clears throat> now, do you see and the, his will is your will. But do you see the distinct <laughs> difference between a, a path of grievances and forgiveness yes. versus a path of me abandoning my usual ways of attacking my life? I'm practicing faithlessness, which is an attack on life, but I don't recognize that. How many people, when you right. wake up and you're going to balance your checkbook and go down there and pay some bills and do some stuff and make some phone calls and complain to the city because they charge you too much, you're just business as usual. Right. Yep. But you could well be on the attack all day long and not know it. Yeah, right. So instead, you say, wait, I've been in my bunker. Uh-huh. I'm I'm approaching the world in a certain way. Mm-hmm. It's a different different setup. What do you think about this take on this? What do you think about what I'm saying? I don't know. <laughs> This is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Paragraph 13. Okay. Grace is not given to a body but to a mind, and the mind that receives it looks instantly beyond the body and sees the holy place where it was healed. There is the altar where the grace was given, in which it stands. Do you then offer grace and blessing to your brother, for you stand at the same altar where grace was laid for both of you, and you are healed by grace together, that you may heal through faith. Okay. Heal through faith. We're talking faith, 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 right. and healing. So I'm, I'm going to go back to that to realize we're talking about faith. But once again, we have this problem with the Course in Miracles, a problem mm-hmm. um, of saying, well, you know what? I don't really understand it. So I'm going to throw them all in the same bucket and say it's all the same thing. Miracles, forgiveness, holy instance. No, it's no. all the same thing. But I no, saw... specific language. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to go just, so just to clarify, from, from paragraph five, uh, back in our last podcast, we spoke of these things. Faithlessness would always limit an attack. Faith would remove all limitations and make whole. Faithlessness would dis- destroy and, and separate. Faith would unite and heal. Faithlessness would interpose illusions between the Son of God and his Creator. Faith would remove all obstacles that seem to rise between them. Faithlessness is wholly dedicated to illusions. Faith is wholly dedicated to truth. Partial dedication is impossible. Truth is the absence of illusion. Illusion is the absence of truth. And both cannot be together. So we're, I mean, the whole thing is that where you're choosing one or the other all the time. We're choosing to unite with our, the illusion and faithlessness is what we're using. We, we don't have any faith in our brothers. We, we, we are going to, we're going to have attack. We're going to do anything, everything to destroy and keep us separate. If I don't have faith in my brother, 
Mm -hmm. I will attack him. Yes. That puts me on the attack. I don't. I'm not on the receiving end. If somebody. <clears throat> if anyway, some, I just wanted to clarify those. Right. Again no, no, good I point. Thought... But if somebody, you know, let's say somebody, you know, what intentionally steps on your toes, you're standing in a group of people, and somebody just takes their heel and grinds it into your foot, you're not going to say, um, "Have faith." No. No. We're talking forgiveness. We're talking about the illusion. We're talking mm -hmm. about trying to do a different way. Now, if I walk into a room. And I, uh, there's a conversation going on, and I sort of boorishly insert myself into that conversation, and I don't really notice that it's not being well received or that I actually am creating a certain sort of a disturbance. Um, I'm on the attack, and I'm I'm not aware of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say that those kinds of events. That's uh, I went into that conversation or that interaction with faithlessness i'm going to say and that and that i can choose faith as a more i guess what i'm starting to get to feeling is this the the, the path to the real world is more specific and well defined um the the path of faith is preventive medicine Pre preventative medicine is that right preventive mm -hmm. yeah, or preventative, preventative. Mm -hmm. yeah preventative medicine mm -hmm. where it's not like I'm, I'm not waiting for the illness to hit mm -hmm. i'm 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 understanding a general modality that i have available to me to be faithless meaning i'm the one that has to figure this thing out there's an obstacle between me and getting those bills paid there's an obstacle between me and making my point there's an there's i've got obstacles and i'm set up to overcome those obstacles which means attack mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's yeah that is faithlessness and that's faithlessness right and faith is to say no those obstacles are not really there show me how those obstacles are not there and i proceed in the ways that i can but with the idea mm -hmm. that anything that I encounter is going to give me the truth of right. a situation. And that's it, the ultimate goal, is the truth. And that's why in the very beginning of the prior part of this whole thing was that you offer all situations to the truth, but it requires faith to actually get the answer. Otherwise, you won't get the answer. Okay, like, long time ago. Mm -hmm. Remember we had that talk about <laughs> making the bed? And we kept talking, and I, was, I wanted to see, you know, how do you make the bed? Oh, right, right, right. Just, the whole thing. Just waking up in the morning is like, All right. am I going to offer just the simplest of tasks Yeah, cruci crucifixion versus a resurrection. How is that decision, oh, right. crucifixion versus resurrection, what does that have to do with making the bed? All that kind of stuff. Well, I'm going to say that this conversation on faith and faithlessness answers that better, because I don't, it's, it's difficult to see myself as attacked by the bed or the bedspread or the need to make the bed. It's mm -hmm. difficult to see myself as being attacked in that. And yet I might have bitterness or, or, or irritation about having to do mundane chores or right. something. Right. And I might not even know it mm -hmm. that, that I'm in it. So that what I do instead as, as, as preventative medicine, I go to uh, the Holy Spirit in this faith. I say, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on this umbrella of faith you know, which means there is another way. The truth will be revealed. And, and I have that as my ongoing sort of inner mantra, inner positioning, understanding that most of the things I go through in a given day don't have to do with feeling attacked. Right. And right. yet the Holy Spirit says the holy instant is every instant of every day. Right. And so if, I, if, if I'm unaware and I've, I've wondered about this. It's a problem. Uh -huh. If I'm unaware that I'm being attacked, and therefore I'm unaware of the need to call for the miracle or the, the, uh, the reinterpretation, uh -huh. I'm unaware of that. Um, that means that most of every single day is a missed opportunity to experience the holy instant because I, I'm unaware. Right. I agree. And this covers that stuff. This yes. covers those, the, those gaps Mm -hmm. In my awareness. Yes. Because awareness is not necessary. The only thing I have to be aware of is the simple faith versus faithlessness, faithlessness. which has nothing to do with anyone attacking me. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So let's say I'm going to take on a series of tasks that sort of irritate me. You know, I mean, uh, it's uh, something, somebody wants me to do some stuff I don't really want yeah. to do. Right. 
And it, it, it's a slight irritation. It's no big deal. I don't really feel attacked, and there, there's no call for forgiveness. I can say, no, this is less than the Son of God deserves. This is less than the perfection of uh, the light of heaven, you know. And that's where the Course is saying here that faith is as easily exchanged for knowledge as is the real world. In other words, I go through the, the day. It's not a lesser path to take this path of faith versus faithlessness, to recognize that I am set up in a body mm -hmm. to be faithless. Less. I'm looking to the body to give me witnesses of a reason to be faithless, to not right. believe that there's another way. Right. That's how the body is set up. It's aches, right. it's and to pain. not be able to trust our brothers because they are always going to be. There's always going to be plenty of brothers against me and against my beliefs and against what I would want for myself and for the world. There's always going to be those contrarians out there that hey, I look, I need to attack. Look, look for my next book. Look for my next book. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Faith. And the real world, right? Okay, faith, faith in and the, the real, real world. world. I swear, I think that it's two distinct Paths. spiritual modalities. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, just like it, you can do Indian religion and you can be in yoga, you know, doing mm -hmm. these postures or different mm -hmm. things that are in Samkhya philosophy. And then you've got bhakti, you know, mm -hmm. where it's just like you have this, de you dedicate yourself to God, you know, and that's all mm -hmm. you do. Very distinct paths. And of, of modality to, like, to the same place, yes. To the same place. You could be right. What do I know? <laughs> 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 okay, paragraph 14. Um, is it 14? Yeah. <clears throat> well, let me, let's go back. I don't know that we covered grace at all in this whole thing. So let's, let's just repeat this. Okay. okay. Grace is not given to a body, but to a mind. And the mind that receives it looks instantly beyond the body and sees the holy place where it was healed. There is the altar where the grace was given in which it stands. Do you then offer grace and blessing to your brother for you stand at the same altar where grace was laid for both of you? It's asking, it, it, well, are you going to do that? And... And be you healed by grace together, that you may heal through faith. So the, the faith in the brother is what allows for this, um, the sense of being at the same altar where God's grace. Now, grace is that bridge. That's the final bridge to the real world. And that's my understanding, that grace is not given to a body, but to the mind. Well, ultimately, can you give can you have faith in the brother, ultimately? Can you have faith in the brother? Um, I would say that of myself, no, I cannot. But with the Holy Spirit, I, I, I basically hand that, that task over. That's my faith. It's like I hand, I hand my grievances over or whatever it is that I have. Let me see it another way. Because... Because there's a that problem. Is, that is my faith. My faith is that now my un union with the Holy Spirit is going to show me that there's no reason to not have faith in my brother. My brother is going to now bring witnesses to me that having faith in him is justified. And it le leads it off. Grace is not given to a body, but, but to, to a mind. mind. In other words, if I have faith in the brother mm -hmm. and I think, well, let's see, you know, whatever brother-in-law or person <laughs> over there across the street have faith in that he's guy. never worked on my car before i yeah. don't know if i want to do that <laughs> you know, that, one of those no he moments. never <laughs> he never delivered in the past you know yeah. so you know so i'm caught in a yeah. cycle so i don't think i can have faith in the brother in terms of if i'm understanding him as any kind of form mm -hmm. or any kind of body mm -hmm. i have to have faith in in the sonship right i have to have faith and that's ultimately in the, the Holy Spirit. It's ultimately that if I do have, you know, quote unquote, faith in the brother, faith in this relative that's always been a feckless loser up until now, mm -hmm. and now I'm supposed to have faith in them. I'm not having faith that they're going to change or that there, something different is going to happen. I'm having faith that I will receive the truth. Yes. I will receive the truth. And it's from the sonship through this mm -hmm. reinterpretation. It's a, it's, it's different than having faith in a person. Paragraph 14. In the holy instant, 
you and your brother stand before the altar God has raised unto himself and to both of you. Lay faithlessness aside and come to it together. There will you see the miracle of your relationship as it was made again through faith. There is nothing faith cannot forgive. No error interferes with its calm sight, which brings the miracle of healing with equal ease to all of them. For what the messengers of love are sent to do, they do, returning the glad tidings that it was done to you and your brother who stand together before the altar from which they were sent forth. You know, we talked about this in other places where um, an amazing situation of time itself is that at the moment, okay, imagine that there's a, a reality of narratives, time unfolding, uh, timelines, sketchy futures. We don't know how any of it's going to play out. It's time and space. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, there it's is... the illusion. That's the illusion. Mm -hmm. That's the illusion. And then there is the solution to all that, mm -hmm. where all is known. All, all, all uh, interactions, all relationships are, in a sense, not, not predestined, just anchored in the now. You know, and it's an eternal now. So that when I have that interaction with that person, and I'm contacting the Holy Spirit, and I have that miraculous situation... It's been there for a million years. Mm -hmm. It's not like we just happen to show up in the same place at the same time. That's an illusion, a trick of time and space, which because it was all solved from the start. If you think this out, it makes a lot of sense. Because once you eliminate time and space as the determining factor for reality, mm -hmm. um, it's all simultaneous. Right. And this, 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 let's say you meet a friend. Let's say you meet somebody at a laundromat, mm -hmm. and there's an exchange, and it's a healing exchange, and someone understands themselves, and you walk away feeling whole. You feel like the truth. There was something that happened there. I don't know what happened there. That meeting was destined from all time on this altar that it's talking about, where you were both destined in front of that altar, in this meeting, in this in incomprehensible now space that you both were there destined to come forward and meet now in this nightmare which is time space narrative right well, right i considered my meeting you grace the well, grace of god well and that's a good one to use because we there were multiple situations there was so many players going up and down up and down the, so many comings and goings of exes and exes and whether or not any of our other past lives were going to hold together. And Impossible I to just... predict, understand. And, and you could just say, wow, that's, that's crazy. I wonder how that happened. We well, just have to say, no, it wasn't a near miss. It wasn't a near hit. It was destined. It was a, it was a, a crossing as every teaching and every relationship is a teaching mm -hmm. goal yes. we're, we're covering that everything is a teaching role so it's just saying here that we both showed up at this altar grace is on that altar it's cleared off there's not the crap on that altar that we brought to it in the time space and the narrative and the, the illusion of thinking well i better load that altar up with some stuff that really works for mm -hmm. me no the only thing that's there is the truth that's the only thing mm -hmm. that's there. And that these, pe these people show up and we meet each other in these moments that seem happenstance, seem accidental. Um, don't be tricked. And that would be the trick of faithlessness, mm -hmm. right? The trick of faithlessness is, wow, what a lucky break. Right. There's no lucky breaks. No, it's not like, it felt like grace. <clears throat> Absolutely. There, you're going to lay faithlessness aside and come to it together. So now that requires faith in order to lay it aside, you know, because you're going to see no difference and say, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to have faith in whatever is transpiring there. The holy instant, this is where the, the time space seems to all get kind of collapsed into one thing because it required faith to have the holy instant. And yet now, in the holy instant, it's saying, ah, lay faithlessness aside. 
as if you hadn't had faith to get the holy instant to begin with. No, I know, but the, you're, you're saying an important error. Okay, <clears throat> explain. The holy instant is all instants. The okay. holy instant is absolutely, utterly ubiquitous. It's everywhere. There are no, there is no... So it's just my awareness of it. It's awareness. Okay. That's all it is. Okay. Right. But the holy instant is there. And so that your the your forgiveness, like I was saying about this amazing time space thing, it looks like, hey, how is this thing going to work out? How's it going to end? I hope this works out. No, the ending and everything was laid down there. Here we have the illusion, and here we have the foundation of perfection mm -hmm. of the of the the call it the real world or knowledge, truth, whatever the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, whatever it is. You know, let's call it this foundation of love, of reality, love. So this is glued to it like this, and we just we remove it like we're scraping paint off of a surface. And as much truth as I can handle, I can scrape off that much of the illusion in any given instance. Mm -hmm. Faithlessness is just deciding to live with the illusion. I, I don't yeah. want to scrape off anything. Right. I just I, I want to see the separation. I want to stay. You want to be separate, right. I want my separate silos mm -hmm. from the brother. Mm -hmm. It's, it's safety, I've got that one played out, and I'm going to gain from this particular interaction. So I'm going to stick with my silos. I'm mm -hmm. going to stick with my separations. Anyway, is that, is that it? Um, I just wanted to figure out for myself. Uh, <laughs> it's like there's these, there's these different things that have, have transpired now in these last paragraphs is that we had faith. Now, when we joined with the Holy Spirit, we are in faith. We're given grace. And grace is not given to the body, but to the mind. That's in paragraph 13. Now, with that grace, it's speaking of in the holy instant and being in front of the altar with my brother. And it's asking me not to have any faithlessness as I come together with him or her, in front of this altar. Mm -hmm. So is there any point in these various, what seems to be sequential things of faith and grace, holy instant, requiring the holy instant requiring me not to have faithlessness and to lay it aside to come together in front of this altar? Um, and there you will see the miracle of your relationship as it was made again through faith. So now I've got the holy instant and I've got a miracle. So I had faith, I've got grace, I've got a holy instant, and I've got a miracle. So is there, is, there, is there really any sequence in it? Or is it happening all simultaneously? I guess that's what I'm asking. My understanding of it is <laughs> that certain things happen in the time-space continuum mm -hmm. and certain things don't. Um, because the holy instant transcends time and space. The miracle is a particular revelation, or a particular awareness of a holy instant. A miracle is an awareness of a holy instant. A holy instant is potentially every instant of time and space, every, every, every isn't aspect. It an, isn't it a now? Is yeah, it it's a continuous now. However, it is anchored to time and space. It's not like, in other words, through the holy instant, it's a, it's a point that adheres to time and space, which is obviously a fragmented realm. Mm -hmm. The holy instant is anchored to that. And when you access the holy instant, when you access a moment of time and space in uh, the illusion, mm -hmm. you end up with memories, possibilities, things that happened, things that didn't happen, pain, all these different things. When you access the holy instant, which would be the same as a second of time, let's say, in uh, the now, it would be the... The, the, the now seeps into the, the, to yeah, the it, time space. It immediately, when I become aware of the holy instant in a, in a miracle, it immediately goes shoots into the entire, the, the whole uh, solution, the whole... God's uh, salvific plan, the, the Holy Spirit's, the mm -hmm. mind of God as presented to us, the truth or knowledge 
information, reinterpretation, whatever, in, uh, offered by the Holy Spirit. I, I have access to that whole thing, but only relative to my holy instant. My feeling of expansion in the miracle is that feeling of spreading and opening into the entire uh, holy instant, which is you, it's everywhere. It's, it, it has no boundaries in time and space. Right. But I'm bounded by my experience of an experience with that person, with that situation, mm -hmm. with that group. You know, and it, it anchors into my narrative understanding of, of your daily life of my daily life. Right. But the feeling of expansion I have is there because I entered into a, a, an area that was um, without these barriers, without these boundaries, without this fragmentation. That's why I have an expanded feeling. But it doesn't necessarily mean that my mind goes in there and I'm reading all time and space and I'm lost in the Akashic no, Records. No, no, no. I, I, you understand I, what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so yeah. so you, you have it. We, but there is a metaphysical principle. Now, that's where the holy instant is an instant, mm -hmm. and it is anchored. The miracle is very time-bound. Grace is not. The altar that was constructed by God to himself and us, as it says here, mm -hmm. that was created in time immemorial. Right. In other words, uh, God is saying, you know, my son, you know, you've gone adventuring on mm -hmm. your thing. Right. And we're all the prodigal son. Yeah, we're the prodigal son. And as soon as the son left, you can figuratively or whatever see the father in time going and erecting an altar, placing his son's picture on it, <laughs> burning a vigil light in front of it, and waiting for his return. Right. But the thing is, since it's God, and it's not an old man with a beard, mm -hmm. And it's not the prodigal son per se that way. Mm -hmm. In other words, the son returns in time. This is a timeless leaving and a timeless rearrival. And in that, there's a timeless altar with the timeless vigil light of waiting and of exultant return of the son. And when I come with my brother, mm -hmm. I come with my brother and I say, we're both up there. And it only takes one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take two of us. I go with the brother to that altar and I realize, wow, I'm having a hard time with this person or this situation or I'm, I'm going to attack this group or I, I don't know if, if I can deliver this situation in a good way. Whatever my doubts are in this world that I'm in. And I realize that God erected an altar to, uh, to himself mm -hmm. and me and my brother and me and this group and me and this geopolitical situation. He elect, erected an altar. There's no limit to the size and the scope that these altars and the and grace are on them. Lay your faithlessness aside while you're there. Well, and that's the only way I can be there. Right. Because faithlessness is to say, um, we'll see if God can deliver the goods. Faith means he he built that altar, and it's there, and the grace is there. It's, mm -hmm. It is there. And the there. answer's there. And the answer is there. Yes, yes. Okay, I got that. Is that, is that what he's... Th yeah, yeah. happens with me and the brother is now um, something that actually extends to all the sonship. And then we can't understand what what we do that when we fulfill our function in for, in forgiveness, when we fulfill our function in having faith um, in our brother, we can't really know how that is affecting the overall awakening of the dream. That's the only thing. I think that's wonderful. We don't know, but we should all try. <laughs> It's the work. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to do. That's the work. Okay. As faithlessness will keep your little kingdom barren and separate, so will faith help the Holy Spirit prepare the ground for the most holy garden that he would make of it. For faith brings peace, and so it calls on truth to enter and make lovely what has already been prepared for loveliness. Truth follows faith and peace completing the process of making lovely that they begin. For faith is still a learning goal, no longer needed when the lesson has been learned. Yet truth will stay forever. Now, we had some conversation about this earlier today. It seems like about this making lovely thing. and I just, I had a problem with that one sentence. It says, truth follows faith 
and peace completing the process of making lovely that they begin. I was like, I didn't, it seemed like the sentence should be more complete. That's all. It begins, uh, so faith will help the Holy Spirit prepare the ground for this holy garden that he will make of it. So faith prepares that uh-huh. ground. Faith brings peace. Faith brings peace because... And then it calls on truth. Well, I know, but but, let's talk about that. Faith brings this peace. Mm -hmm. Why would faith bring peace? Faith, faithfulness, faithlessness, compared to considering the conversation we've had about it. Well, faith brings peace because I'm uniting with wanting the truth. Because um, the truth can't be revealed without without faith. I'm accepting the atonement for myself, meaning that the truth actually exists. Yes. And I don't have to manufacture the truth in my way. Right. No, you have to have faith in it. I so. go to the pre-existent, the only truth, mm-hmm. not the one that I would make. Right. So that brings peace. Yes. Because I've, I've let what's already there, already complete, already perfect, be what it is. And that's faith, things unseen. Yes. Faith in the thing unseen. Yes. Okay. Which and, is the Holy Spirit. It's an unseen. Okay. And then what happens? Then faith brings peace. So calls on truth to enter. Okay. So once I'm at, I'm at peace, in other words, I can relax. Uh, truth can then enter, but truth that, okay. So that's God. Mm-hmm. And tr- truth. Well, truth is going to Make me recognize my oneness with God, and okay. with my brother, right? It's okay. Gonna, it's going to bring on the, that atonement. Uh-huh. And, and to make lovely. In other words, so, so now we've got peace, and then we have truth, and, we, and then we have to make lovely mm-hmm. what has already been prepared for loveliness. And, and when I hear make lovely, I'm hearing uh, that it's a, beauty as an experience. I, I have an experience of beauty uh, that isn't necessarily there with the truth or isn't necessarily there with peace. You know, when I, I'm, I'm at peace, I'm calm, I'm, I'm, I'm like this, it's mm-hmm. like, this is great, I've turned this mm-hmm. over. And then the truth arrives and the truth is, okay, we're all one and all this kind of mm-hmm. stuff. Well, the next slide, sentence was, truth follows faith and peace, completing the process of making lovely that they begin. Okay. And I would say what they began, and maybe that's why it's maybe it's, 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 it's actually a, that that they began is what maybe it's supposed okay. To be. So the process, the making lovely, is the entire cycle of preparing the ground. There's faith preparing the ground. Uh, peace. peace follows, and then follow truth. Then f- truth follows faith and peace. So once okay. I have faith, once I have faith in the brother. Peace enters in I, because now I now I'm trusting the process. When, when I'm trusting the process, it means I've turned it over. Truth now follows that. It completes the process and makes lovely what faith and peace had begun. Okay. No, no, faith ca- is still then faith is still a learning goal. You know, it's still within time space. Faith is within my time space realm. No long is no longer needed when when the lesson has been learned. Yet truth will stay forever. So truth is part of the eternal. Faith and forgiveness are part of what is required of me as a function within the time-space realm in order for truth to be revealed. Okay, so yeah, so faith faith is a delivery system. Yeah. uh, Faithlessness is a delivery system. Faithlessness delivers the nightmare, delivers separation, delivers That's a good the hard way of putting work. It. And then faith is a delivery system, delivering truth, beauty, all that. Let then your dedication be to the eternal and learn how not to interfere with it and make it slave to time. For what you think you do to the eternal, you do to you, whom God created as his son, is slave to nothing, being Lord of all, along with his creator. You can enslave a body, but an idea is free, incapable of being kept in prison or limited in any way except by the mind that thought it, for it remains joined to its source, which is which is its jailer or its liberator, according to which it chooses as its purpose for itself. 
So how, what was that again? Because I had to turn the page. The son is slave to nothing, being Lord of all, along with his creator. You can enslave a body. An idea is free. An idea is incapable of being kept in prison or limited in any way, except by the mind that thought it. So an idea, um, so if, because an idea remains joined to its source. What, what, how is it that you think that you're doing something to the eternal? Well, I would, I would say that if, if I choose the faithlessness, because this was about faith, faithlessness, and healing, if, if I choose to stay in a faithless world that I do not want to have faith in my brothers, forget it, you know, I'm on my own here, you know, that kind of thing. That means that I am choosing to hold off from the eternal, from sensing itself as complete. Okay, that's, it's just a sense. And I've used this analogy before where if I am the body of God and my finger is, you know, the self, my, my individuated self, and um, I put a tourniquet on it so that life force is very, very dim in it. So now it's seeing dimness. It's kind of half alive, okay? Basically, it ends up asleep. It's all buzzy and everything else. Um, I'm choosing to stay here instead of saying, I, I have the ability to take by, through faith, to take that, that tourniquet off so I can remember who I am and who all my brothers are. All my fingers are all my other brothers, that they're all part of the one. They're, they're all part of it. They, they've never left it. So if I'm, going to, if I'm going to keep that little piece and say, no, I'm going to play my little game over here and I'm going to stay all fuzzy and asleep, and that's just the way I'm going to do it, um, what I do to the eternal is have it sense. It's a sense of incompletion because the, the Course talks about that, that it feels incomplete without us remembering it, that we are, are still one with it without us remembering, bringing to the awareness of the mind that we never left, there is a sense of incompleteness. So the eternal would have, if you could call it that, it knows itself as one, but it senses a part of itself doesn't know that it's, it's one. It's still there. So if that's the only thing I can think that I'm doing to the eternal. I'm cutting myself off from remembering what do you say to that? I choose to think on a daily basis, let's say just as we're sitting here right now, mm -hmm. I choose to view myself as, you know, physical. You know, I mean, the, the camera, the meter's running, things are moving yeah. along. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm definitely in this body. I'm doing this thing. Um, that's where I believe that I am. And if I persist in thinking that that is the sum of your experience, the sum of my experience, mm -hmm. your experience, or anyone else's experience, um, as bounded by, let's say, number of YouTube views or number of faux pas that I managed to deliver in an hour period, <laughs> or, you know, whatever. If I think that it's bounded by these uh, metrics, mm -hmm. then that's faithlessness, and that I'm, I'm tormenting the eternal in that. And the eternal is that to the degree that I'm in partnership and that I'm, I'm exercising faith in things unseen, in a complete world, that complete world has already um, asserted itself, inserted itself in the fact that I'm going to stick my foot in my mouth, you know, I'm going to forget <laughs> to charge the battery, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go way long on inappropriate <laughs> topics. It's already considered these things. Uh -huh. it's, yes. al it's already considered. And if I think that I need to go back and rethink, redo, reassess, remanage this, then that is, in a sense, faithlessness, where I'm taking the reins back into my hands. Mm -hmm. That's the separation again. That's the separation again. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think is that the, the, the prison is... Um, it only goes as far as moi, as far as I take it. And um, the Course points out that there's a, a horrible error that we've made, which is that we do have an endowment. We do have access to um, not just an inheritance, a state of being right. that's, that's limitless. I mean, even the Bible says the kingdom of... Heaven is at hand, and you might as well place your hand over your heart because that's, you know, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's not somewhere else. It's right here, 
right now, now, can I bring my awareness? Can I undo my grievances, my judgments and everything? Let it go long enough that the Holy Instant can start to give me witness. The Holy Spirit gives me those moments, witnesses that are the Holy Instant that proves that the oneness has never gone away. It's just never, it's always been there. Any delimiting situation, any anything that's creating boundaries and dividers and baffles in my experience, like let's say we, we shut this all down mm -hmm. and then I've got to go deal with some issue that I don't want to deal with. Let's say mm -hmm. it's a job I don't really want to do, some client, something, or um, I don't know what, my own wretched self somehow you know or i just don't Your like you know self. whatever i just don't like what i am whatever that thing is that i have to manage or cope with when we shut it all down uh -huh. um if i let it stand there it's faithlessness right because faith would be now wait a second you know let's let's be real about this whether it's a, a relationship or an outstanding process that i don't want to have anything to do with an outstanding bill or you know, some health issue or relational problem, whatever it is, it, it, it's out there standing just looming like a dragon. I shut all this wonderful religious talk down, and now I'm stuck with all that crap, you know, and that's, that's stuck reality. Stuck with yourself. <laughs> right. That is faithlessness. Right, it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's faithlessness because I've chosen to go with the delimiting self and what it's saying uh, small with a small s. But what the Course is saying is... Um, you got to understand the the scope and the magnitude mm -hmm. of the problem that you've created for yourself of giving away the uh, such a, a magnificent inheritance you, right. you gave it away you won't allow it to exist mm -hmm. You allow that. Actually, outst you just barricaded yourself against it. Yeah, you out you allow the outstanding bill or that mm -hmm. relationship to instead be the, like walls that spring up. Yes. When you put the course down, they spring up and they say, "Here, we're the real deal." Mm -hmm. It's like no, no, no. And no, that's why the first sentence says, "Then let then your dedication be to the eternal and learn how not to interfere with it and make it slave to time." Because all those things that you're talking about are the slaves to time. That's making it a slave to time, meaning th they have to work themselves out in time. And they, they right. were worked out a long time ago. No. So, so, so for what you think you do to the eternal, you do to you. So if you're going to make the, you're going to try to enslave <laughs> the eternal, that's kind of funny. I'm going to make the eternal, I'm going to put barricades. But basically we put barricades up against the eternal. You know, as if I could be create my own bubble of reality uh, around myself against the truth of love and the truth of all that is. But, and then it's, this, it's like, whom God created as his son is slave to nothing. So it, again, it's like forces you to, to say, that's impossible. It says, no, that's impossible. It's, you as a son of God are slave to nothing. All of it you've made up as an idea of the mind. All this I've made up as an idea of my mind. And then um, you can you can enslave a body, but you can't but an idea is free and capable of being kept in prison. So let's, we are ideas. Let's go with that. We are ideas and we are the son of God, which right. is the idea that extended so it could see itself. So that God could see itself. That's the way I look at it. Okay. Is, what do you think? <laughs> sounds good to me. Yeah. It does it. Okay. Don't We're going to go with that. Yeah. <laughs> have a good day. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Is that I do not know how the Holy Spirit or that realm will come in to bring about peace to the situation. That I have to leave completely up to not my idea of what it needs to look like because things do happen here that seem miraculous, that happen within the physical world and everything else. Like I said, Jesus healing the paralytic. So, and who is it for? It's for everyone who sees it. It's for everyone. That 
is, is to prove the power and the love of God. Everyone has to be in awe of that. It's to change the mind and bring God present to magnify the Lord so that we have a way to relate to that which is God because you're getting further and further lost in the dream, further and further lost in the dream. And if you get too lost, you won't even know where to put your faith. You, you, it's, God wouldn't do that to us. The, the overarching love of God wouldn't do that to us. It's not going to bring us to, to states of complete pain and anxiety over and over and over again. That's what our ego does. That's what it does. It keeps us in prison. When we start to work with the Holy Spirit, there will be a, a change. in the, that's, This is the way I, I see it, that there will be a change in the mind to the point where peace is the outcome and you will be able to it'll be tangible and you'll know about it because it's no longer pressing on on your mind or your senses to have a particular answer that's different than what now has happened whatever that is well, let me that talk about one peace. one uh, this is a real an actual situation that that i was part of a long time ago when i worked at al's golf haven <laughs> um a guy came up to buy tickets for one of the like the rides at this place I almost cried out when I saw his face. He had had skin grafts on his entire face. Uh -huh. It looked like he was wearing a skin mask. Uh -huh. Those empty sockets where the eyes are yeah. back there. Yeah. The mouth didn't fit. The nose was misshapen. I almost screamed uh -huh. to see this. He didn't seem like he was in a good mood. Yeah. I wonder why. Yeah. Because everybody that sees him wants to scream. Right. It's a monster. Yeah, he's a monster. Right. Now let's just for without going too long, I'm going to let's try to get into that as a situation. Mm -hmm. This man, let's say he wants healing, which is going to be a physical healing so that his skin lays there. Well, science won't get him there. It's not mm -hmm. it's it's not really going to happen. So here's a person with this skin graft and he's going around the world with people hollering out loud at what they see mm -hmm. at him. Where's where's faith and where's faithlessness do you think in this with this man? I know that this is a projection. I I know that this is a, a something I'm drumming up. It's it's not me, but in a way it's all of us in every fearful situation where we want the truth but we really want the physical body to be healed. Right. Where is it within himself? Where is faith in him? I'm going to say, what would it look like? Because God, to say, I'm sorry, my son, just get used to it. You're going to walk around with this face that's going to scare the hell out of everybody. And you know, you're not going to be able to get close to anybody. They're not going to want to get close enough to you. Mm -hmm. um, it, this is an isolating, frightful thing. And I would say the truth of the matter in terms of the Holy Spirit, I'm just going to riff on it, is... I would say I have done this. Um, I have, you know, I've done this with my face. I've, I've. This is a choice beyond my understanding of choices to have this skin graft, to have this situation, whether it's a car wreck or a, a mm -hmm. third degree burn. I did this, and now I've outpictured the rejection of all of my brothers to me, and it's very real. Oh, I'm, it's, yes. I, it, I have oh, reinforced yes. it so that I will get this, and now I use my own physical body as a test. And it always comes up negative. You are correct. These people don't love you. These people don't accept you. You get this again and again and again. Mm -hmm. Because of the face scares the hell out of them. Mm -hmm. I would say um, to do what Byron Katie did when she had a cancer on the side of her face, which she didn't care about, mm -hmm. but every conversation she got into with people, they stared at the cancer on the side of her face. She had it removed. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't do that with these skin grafts on the face. So I'm saying that the guy, I would have to do what happened in V for Vendetta, is he wore a mask. Yes. I would have to wear a mask mm -hmm. so that I can participate with my brothers. Right. And at a point where the where we... If someone needs to have something, I give them a business card. It says I had third degree burns. I don't want to subject people to what my face looks like. I find myself particularly horrible. Here's my card. This is my story. If you're interested in why I wear a ski mask everywhere I go. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. And, and so, so that I can participate with the world. So I yes. no longer, I, I, I'm to heal myself. Mm -hmm. I have to get to where the body itself isn't acting as that exciting 
yeah, the thing, thing that repulses somebody. Yes. So, well, I mean, again, um, I, I, I can't possibly be inside that person's body or anything. I mean, I can imagine and, and feeling so isolated, you know, um, from everyone because of it. I want peace, right? right. I'm that guy with that face. I want, I want peace and yeah. that there's nothing nothing in science or in the physical world that can help it and i can sit around and pray for some mm -hmm. one soul who can see past it mm -hmm. but really i'm so locked in a sort of an illusion of rejection and utter isolation mm -hmm. i have to do something to get outside of that right. so i would say i you know for me just talking out loud i wear that ski mask in the hope that someday some place mm -hmm. in some setting I can take that thing off and say, brace yourself. This is yeah, me. Right, right. Yeah. And that's, that's the truth that I'm in. And so right. I live that truth mm -hmm. of what's coming to me. So are you saying that the mask acts as um, uh, an answer from the Holy Spirit? What, what are you trying to say? I'm saying that? that I myself have to be honest that the, the affliction that I have is proving out all of my... Um, worst my fear. worst fears yes. about what I am and and I and I don't want you know and God wouldn't want that and logically I'm caught in my illusion mm -hmm. and so then I have to say in faith Holy Spirit I'm partnering with you this is the decision I'm going to make mm -hmm. you know I'm not going to lay it on God to melt that skin onto my muscles and, and tendons mm -hmm. the way it should you know right. it's not that you know for now I'm going to do this and I'm going to see how that feels mm -hmm. and see if I can go out into the world with with that right and see if that helps and and to to start to work it it at a place to where I'm 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 willing to make the body neutral Right. Okay. Well, the thing of it is, is okay. Let's let's say that I had enough. Uh, let's see. I had I had enough um, practice or whatever to, to actually know to rely on a creator, to rely on, to rely on the Holy Spirit. This this terrible thing has happened. You know, half my face is burned off and everything else. Um, then I have to um, I have to ask for the the healing of my mind so that I I can say, say my, my inner prayer is that I want to see brothers as myself and I want them to see me as the truth as well. Only you know what that needs to be. And, we want and, to be united with and, our brothers. And the, the thing of it is, is I, I don't know if somebody's going to come up with a beautiful mask that I can wear over my face or I don't know if it's going to take three surgeries before it starts to look fairly normal. I don't know what those, I don't know. The prayer is that, that you, you want to see the truth of yourself and the rest of the world. And so at that point, that takes a lot of faith. Okay. Now you're going to, you're going to go about doing what you can to actually live in this world because that's what we do as a body. But if you're turning it over, then I don't know what the miracle is going to look like. I honestly don't know. In every situation, it is different because there's, there's no way to know how a person who's gone through something that, that traumatic and everything else doesn't suddenly become a speaker and an inspiration for people. We don't know, what's, we don't know what their trajectory is. We don't know what that, how that person is now going to reach others or they're going to go so inward which means that they won't rely on the holy spirit and they will be in constant fear they'll be, feel rejected they will hate themselves they'll all there'll be all this other ego based ideas of self that will be very self-destroying so i don't all i can say is that each situation that happens within the realm of the dream that each one, no matter how traumatic, no matter how awful it seems, is that if we're not going to rely on that partnership with the Holy Spirit, we cannot know what the miraculous is going to look like. Well, All I think that you, what you said is an absolute truth. I cannot know what the miracle is going to be. You know, that's right. why it's a miracle. That's why it's a miracle. I mean, obviously, 
there are miracles that happen at Lourdes. You know, people, I think I just watched one fairly recently or something where, you know, she, she had braces on her hips. It was, she was a, a complete mess. You know, I think it was a sister of some sort at one of the Catholic churches. And um, I don't know what she did. I don't know why she would be the one who's blessed with a complete healing, but she was. And um, they use this, they keep all kinds of medical documentation, everything to prove the healing through these waters and everything else. But someone else could go there, have the same kinds of afflictions and have absolutely no quote, physical healing. She is something to help magnify the Lord based on whatever. I do not know what the internal nature of her, her prayer life, her connection to God or anything else, but somehow she's been given the grace to actually have an outpicturing within the world. How, how should I know how that's supposed to look? Well, I'm going to have to assume, I would have to assume that in a sense, she was healed at Lourdes because the body had already become neutral. It, you know, she already didn't really... She already surrendered it to She you. had already decided that this is her life and this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. And that that healing wasn't her body. The healing was in the people around her. Absolutely. It was just another Lord's miracle that they just needed one for, mm -hmm. the, for the thousands, if not tens of millions of right. people who rely on Lourdes as a kind of a litmus test for God's intervention. Right. You know, that, that, that brings faith. That brings faith. It, it's a faith-building exercise, and she ends up being the poster child for why you should have faith, and that's the, a massive healing of other people, not her. Right. So what I'm saying is within the, con within the construct of the dream, and when we're relying on the Holy Spirit and everything else, I do not know how the Holy Spirit is going to speak to me or to the, or to the masses through me because it's always a healing any healing for me is also a healing of the sonship so a person who has burns and things like that um you know traumatic situations whatever they may be um the 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 hope and prayer would be that they have someone who can move them through to a level of spiritual understanding that they're beyond the body so that they can move out of that constant feeling like this is the worst thing this you know and they want to be depressed and everything else i i can't imagine w what those kind of situations are i can't imagine how i would respond well i just just to cap it off i want to say that i i actually did have a cousin who um at a young age i don't know he was in his teens uh had a, a lawnmower thing blew up or something and he ended up burning Third degree burns over, I think it was 90%, 85% of his entire oh, body. Now, it completely missed his hands and completely missed his face. Oh my gosh. Everything else got burned off. That's so weird. Yeah. So that's, when you look at that, you realize that there's such an intentionality mm -hmm. where, I know this sounds weird, but in the name of truth, Son, I'm not going to make you do the skin mask, alienating your brothers. I'm going to let you wear a long sleeve shirt, button it down. Nobody's going to know. Mm -hmm. This is your world. Mm -hmm. And the world with anyone that you are bring intimate enough to take your clothes off with. This right. is that world. But other than that, it's all yours to make sense out of. Right. So that he gets a chance to reflect on that wound, which is pretty grody right. and um and and to come to the truth the truth being because we don't know why anybody like the guy with the, the skin grafts is that i want an absolute you know like it's a form of social suicide you know because on the other hand you've got like elephant man that story mm -hmm. where elephant man inspires people mm -hmm. you know he was horrendous to look at nobody could stand to look at this guy right but when they were exposed to him with enough, apparently people fell in love with this guy. Right. So, like I said, none of none of the physical world, no matter how atrocious or you know uh, um, horrific or whatever it is, it can, all of it can be used to awaken the sonship, and that's what we need to leave to the Holy Spirit as to what that miracle needs to be, so that. Peace is the outcome. Truth. Truth. The truth. The truth and peace. Where are we? Paragraph six? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> okay. The inevitable compromise is the belief that the body must be healed and not the mind. 
For this divided goal has given both an equal reality, both an equal reality which could be possible only if the mind is limited to the body and divided into little parts of seeming wholeness but without connection.